phase one and phase two of estrogen metabolism. When investigating an estrogen hormonal imbalance, one thing to consider is hormone metabolism. That is, how well your body is breaking down the estrogen and into which metabolites. So you may ask, which patients would benefit from investigating estrogen metabolism? Well, these include any premenopausal patients with risk factors for breast or endometrial cancer, people demonstrating symptoms of elevated estrogen, and this may include endometriosis, fibroids, or what's commonly referred to as estrogen dominant symptoms. And it can also be beneficial for women taking hormone replacement therapy. So to illustrate how estrogen metabolism can affect hormonal balance, we need to start with a little review. Estrogen is produced in the adrenal glands and fat tissue, as well as in the ovaries in women and people who menstruate, and in the testes in men. In women and people who menstruate, there are three different types of estrogen. Estrone, which is E1. It is considered to be a weak estrogen. It is produced mostly in body fat, but also in the placenta and ovaries. Then we have estradiol, E2. This is the most potent and active of the estrogens. It is made in the ovaries and in lesser amounts from DHEA and testosterone. It binds very strongly to estrogen receptors and is the main estrogen involved in the menstrual cycle. And then lastly, we have estriol, E3. Now, estradiol can be converted to estriol predominantly in the liver. Estriol is a weak estrogen. It is also the main estrogen of pregnancy and is secreted by the placenta. So our three different types of estrogen, estrone, estradiol, and estriol, are metabolized in the liver through three pathways into the 2-hydroxyl, 4-hydroxyl, and 16-hydroxyl estrogen. This is known as phase one of estrogen metabolism. The 2-hydroxyl meta metabolite pathway is considered the best as it creates a weak metabolite that has the lowest risk for cancer. The other two pathways, the 4-hydroxyl and 16-hydroxyl metabolite pathway, produce more potent estrogenic metabolites. And the 4-hydroxyl metabolite in particular is associated with a higher risk of breast and endometrial cancer. Now, phase two of estrogen metabolism involves turning the estrogens into water-soluble compounds that can easily be excreted in the urine or in the gut. This process is known as conjugation and may involve methylation, sulfation, or glucuronidation. It's important that both phase one and phase two are supported when addressing hormone metabolism. So in clinical practice, we can measure these different metabolites. And if an individual is producing too much of the 4-hydroxyl and potentially 16-hydroxyl metabolites compared to the 2-hydroxyl metabolite, then we focus on redirecting the estrogen down the 2-hydroxyl pathway. And to support the 2-hydroxyl pathway, we use supplements and foods that upregulate the CYP1A1 liver enzyme that is responsible for the hydroxylation of estrone into the 2-hydroxyl metabolite. Now, the foods and supplements that we may recommend can include cruciferous vegetables um, such as broccoli or Brussels sprouts, and the supplement diindolmethane, which is commonly referred to as DIM, um, has been shown to upregulate the CYP1A1 enzyme. So we also will take into consideration environmental factors that may be affecting this pathway. For example, insecticides have been shown to reduce the activity of the 2-hydroxyl pathway. The other thing we would take into consideration is if the individual has any SNPs. Now, SNP, S-N-P, stands for Single Nucleotide Polymorphism which is a DNA sequence variation that occurs when one nucleotide, which is kind of this building block in the genome sequence, is modified. Now, delving into SNPs and explaining SNPs, it's a huge topic and we won't be able to address it in this video. However, it should be stated that a SNP doesn't necessarily cause disease, but it can affect an individual's estrogen metabolism. So for example, the COMT, catechol o methyltransferase gene, is involved in the methylation of estrogen, and particularly, it's involved in the conversion of the 2-hydroxyl estrogen to the final metabolite, 2-methoxyestrone. 
So individuals with reduced COMP-T activity have increased catechol estrogen accumulation and phase two of estrogen metabolism is reduced. It's sluggish. So to support methylation, we can use um, various methyl donors and some of the common ones we see are B vitamins, SAM E and choline, and as well as other nutrients required such as magnesium. Looking at estrogen metabolism provides us with more information about total estrogen exposure, and it really helps us to focus on prevention. It allows us to take a look at those metabolites and to evaluate whether or not you're breaking down that estrogen optimally, and if there's anything we need to do to create more of a balance. So stay tuned for more information about estrogen metabolism, and in particular, phase three of estrogen metabolism, which happens in the gut. Thank you for listening. Take care.